Yep, it's KP's video news, folks. It's another news flash. Another news flash. Ah, sad to say that another man who said I can't breathe died in custody. An autopsy calls it a homicide. So Seattle, a black man who called out I can't breathe before dying in police custody in Tacoma, Washington, was killed as a result of oxygen deprivation and the physical restraint that was used on him according to the details of a medical examiner's report on Wednesday. The Pierce County Medical Examiner's Office concluded that the death of the man, Manuel Ellis, 33 years old, was a homicide. Investigators with the Pierce County Sheriff's Department were in the process of preparing a report about the March death, which occurred shortly after an arrest by officers from the Tacoma Police Department, said the sheriff's spokesman, Eric Troyer. Okay, let me clear something up. This death was just reported. This thing was just reported today. And since it was just reported today, it's actually seven hours ago. However, by reading the story, it said the process of repairing a, a report about the March death. So this person actually died in March. Okay, let me continue reading here. The information is, a, is all being put together, Detective Troyer said. We ex expect to present it to the prosecutor at the end of this week or early next week. Mr. Ellis's sister, uh, Monet Carter, called for action to bring accountability in the death and further scrutiny of, of both the police department's practices and how the investigation into his death has been handled. There's a lot of questions that still need to be answered, Ms. Uh, Carter said. Ms., uh, Mr. Ellis died from respiratory arrest, hy uh, hypoxia, and physical restraint, according to the medical examiner's office. The report listed uh, also listed methamphetamine intoxication and heart disease as contributing factors. Police officers encountered Mr. Ellis, a musician and father of two from Tacoma on the night of March 3rd as they were stopped at an intersection. They saw him banging on the window of another vehicle, Detective Troy said. Mr. Ellis approached the officers, Detective Troy said, and then threw an officer to the ground when the officer got him out of that vehicle the two officers and two backup officers who joined, uh, two of them white, one black, and one Asian handcuffed him. Mr. Ellis was physically restrained and, as he continued to be combative, the uh, Tacoma Police Department said in a statement on Wednesday. Detective Troyer said he did not know all the details of the restraint the officers used. They were not wearing body cameras, but said he did not believe they used a chokehold or a knee on Mr. Ellis's neck. They rolled him on his side after he called out, I can't breathe. The main reason why he was restrained was so he wouldn't hurt himself or them, Detective Troy said. As soon as he, as he couldn't breathe, they requested medical aid. Detective Troy said that the call for aid came four minutes after the officers encountered Mr. Ellis. Mr. Ellis was still breathing when medical personnel arrived Detective Troy said he was removed from handcuffs while personnel worked on him for about 40 minutes. Detective Troy said he was then pronounced dead. Family members said Mr. Ellis was the father of an 11-year-old son and an 18-month-old daughter. He was a talented musician at his church. Uh, uh, his sister said Mr. Ellis was like a father figure to her boys, coaching them on things like how to handle themselves to keep safe in a world of racial injustice. My heart truly hurts, she said. It's painful. My brother was, was my best friend. On Wednesday night, she said, uh, on Wednesday night, she and others held a vigil in Tacoma. Brian G. Ordano, a close friend of Mr. Ellis, said that the two usually spoke several times a day and that Mr. Ellis had video chatted with them two hours before his death. He had been excited about a church service he had attended and proud of how he had played drums during the service. 
He said it would it would be uncharacteristic of Mr. Ellis to act in a violent way described by police. He was living in a clean and sober house and was getting his life back together, he said. He was always uplifting, uh, uh, Giordano said. He was always on the up and up about taking care of people. The death come as protests have spread around the nation over the case of George Floyd, a black man who died in the custody of Minneapolis police last week. Minneapolis officials have charged all four officers in that case, including Derek Chauvin, who kept his knee on Mr. Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes during the, uh, during the arrest. Forensic, forensic experts who conducted a private autopsy of Mr. Floyd's uh, families concluded that another officer's knee on Mr. Floyd's back contributed to making it impossible for his lungs to take in uh, sufficient air. Mayor Victoria Wooders of Tacoma said on Wednesday that she would take appropriate steps based on the findings of the sheriff's investigations. We will learn the result of that investigation even as our country reels from the recent killings of George uh, Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and too many others, said Ms. Woodard. Governor Jay Inslee of Washington said the issue was a top priority for him. We will be pushing to make sure there is a full and complete investigation of the incident, the governor said. And it's a lot, I mean, you know, this, this stuff, man, is going on, and it's like, I mean, what are you what are you supposed to do, man? It's like every day, every single day, it's more and more and more uh, cases coming out that are coming out about about unarmed black black people getting killed, black men and women and kids and children. I mean, not you know, not just adults. So uh, I got to read this story here, and it's pertaining to. Uh, George Floyd's six-year-old daughter, Gianna, speaks out. And uh, Gianna Floyd, the six-year-old beautiful daughter of George Floyd, has spoken out after the brutal, uh, brutal murder by a Minneapolis police officer doing a, an appearance on Good Morning America. She told the world that she misses her dad. She said that her dad played with her and her mother, uh, Roxy, chimed in to confirm that George did indeed love his daughter and would often play with her all day long. She also said that he was a great dad. Roxy said during the interview that she did not at first tell her daughter about what happened to her dad. However, because Gianna told her that she keeps hearing her dad's name, she decided to tell her that her dad died because he couldn't breathe. In uh, another video, footage Gianna his daughter could be heard saying that her dad changed the world that's right a da dad is a martyr he, he he's laid his life down so we could have a better life he died so that we can have finally get some change and we're gonna have to hold these people accountable everybody accountable for all the atrocities that have been done against black people every person must be held accountable and it's it's no time for for playing games and garbage and uh all the stupidity all the black on black crime all that crap got to stop it's time to stop all that stupidity man it's time to give it up it is time to give that crap up because we don't need the help we don't need we don't need to help them destroy us. We don't need that. We do not need that. So you know, stop stop you know stop and take and think about what I'm saying here. We have we're we're protesting against uh, black you know white people that have been killing killing black people and doing all these crazy things. And not to get the message mis mixed up, but listen to what I'm saying. We, black people, as a, as a people, have to stop killing each other as well. Because why should we help them? It's like, that's what it seems like sometimes. It's, it seems like we're helping them destroy us. It's like genocide. It's like self-genocide. So let's address that. Also, we got to address that too, because uh, that's 
that's a that's a real big killer that's a real big killer right there uh you know sometimes it's like you know i turn you know and sometimes i can't even watch the news man i can't even watch it because it's like i was living in chicago living in la it's like man the uh those two cities man it's like a tale tale it's two different cities man but the, the results is just basically the same in the 80s and the 90s so uh, all the way up until the times of the of the uh la riots rodney king riots when i was living in los angeles so many black people were getting killed black on black gang grant gang related crimes man it was ridiculous that same situation had been happening in chicago in the last for the last 10 years or so and especially since they tore down all the projects around chicago and scattered out all, all you know all the people all all over you know all all over town and then they decided the city of chicago decided to arrest all the gang leaders and lock all the gang leaders up which left a whole bunch of gang members out there with nobody to guide them in return what happened and because of that you got total chaos where you might have had uh, uh 20 gangs now that since you arrested all the leaders now you got 500 little clicks and uh with no leaders so it's like that's a result of of your stupidity and your thinking i'm talking about i'm talking to the police department i'm talking to the mayor of chicago now all the murders and all the killings that go on in chicago that's black black crime related you definitely have to accept your responsibility in that because you your plan backfired the plan that you had backfired the plan that you had to remove the head did absolutely nothing you removed the leaders but only thing it did was make the whole situation worse so you know hey let's get let's get it together folks let's get it together as a people and we gotta lift, lift each other up